Now let's turn for the first time to Acts 20. Yesterday we heard how Demetrius, the silversmith, shrine-making businessman, incited a riot against Paul. Acts 20 After the uproar died down, Paul called together the believers and with words of encouragement said goodbye to them. Then he left and went on to Macedonia. He went through those regions and encouraged the people with many messages. Then he came to Achaia, where he stayed three months. He was getting ready to go to Syria when he discovered that there were Jews plotting against him, so he decided to go back through Macedonia. So Pater, son of Pyrrhus, from Berea, went with him. So did Aristarchus and Secundus from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derbe, Tychicus and Trophimus from the province of Asia, and Timothy. They went ahead and waited for us in Troas. We sailed from Philippi after the festival of unleavened bread, and five days later we joined them in Troas, where we spent a week. On Saturday evening we gathered together for the fellowship meal. Paul spoke to the people and kept on speaking until midnight, since he was going to leave the next day. Many lamps were burning in the upstairs room where we were meeting. A young man named Eutychus was sitting in the window, and as Paul kept on talking, Eutychus got sleepier and sleepier until he finally went sound asleep and fell from the third story to the ground. When they picked him up, he was dead. But Paul went down and threw himself on him and hugged him. Don't worry, he said. He is still alive. Then Paul went back upstairs, broke bread, and ate. After talking with them for a long time, even until sunrise, Paul left. They took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. We went on ahead to the ship and sailed off to Assos, where we were going to take Paul aboard. He had told us to do this because he was going there by land. When he met us in Assos, we took him aboard and went on to Mytilene. We sailed from there and arrived off Chios the next day. A day later we came to Samos, and the following day we reached Miletus. Paul had decided to sail on by Ephesus, so as not to lose any time in the province of Asia. He was in a hurry to arrive in Jerusalem by the day of Pentecost, if at all possible. From Miletus, Paul sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. When they arrived, he said to them, You know how I spent the whole time I was with you from the first day I arrived in the province of Asia. With all humility and many tears I did my work as the Lord's servant during the hard times that came to me because of the plots of some Jews. You know that I did not hold back anything that would be of help to you as I preached and taught in public and in your homes. To Jews and Gentiles alike I gave solemn warning that they should turn from their sins to God and believe in our Lord Jesus. And now, in obedience to the Holy Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit has warned me that prison and troubles wait for me. But I reckon my own life to be worth nothing to me. I only want to complete my mission and finish the work that the Lord Jesus gave me to do, which is to declare the good news about the grace of God. I have gone about among all of you, preaching the kingdom of God, and now I know that none of you will ever see me again. 
Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father and our Savior, Christ Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you would send the Holy Spirit to be with us and lead us just as you led Paul. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be bold in proclaiming your word. Paul did not hold back from proclaiming in public and privately in homes everything that would be helpful to his audience. Lord, help us not to hold back in any opportunity that you give to us. He told people plainly that they must turn from their sins to God and believe in the Lord Jesus. And that's our message also. And Lord, he did not reckon his life to be worth anything. The only thing he wanted was to complete the mission that you gave him. Oh Lord, it's true. Our lives will soon be gone and what we leave behind will disappear. Lord, help us to finish well the work that the Lord Jesus gives to us. Help us to declare the good news about the grace of God. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that our lives would bring glory to you, even today.